Whoa, okay. That's a new one. Whoa, okay. Game physics. <laughs> Welcome to the 17th part of our 474,000 part series, Better Know a Speedrunner! Today, we'll learn more about Viper. Viper is an absolute monster when it comes to speedrunning racing games, with runs posted in over 70 titles and holding world record times in over 35 of them. A quick note before we get started, if you're a speedrunner yourself and you're interested in being featured in this series, hit me up on Discord or simply let me know in the comments below. Viper, also commonly known as the BPG-13, is a 23-year-old electrical technician from Manchester. When he's not putting his foot to the floor in various vehicles, you can find him watching YouTube videos, hanging out with his friends, or watching professional motorsports in real life. It's rather fitting that one of the greatest driving game speedrunners of all time started out by watching runs of one of the greatest driving games of all time. But before that, Viper had to feel out this whole game streaming thing everybody was talking about. At first I just streamed games like Call of Duty and Grid 2, etc. Uh, before I got into it, I rarely streamed to be honest, and for the most part I kind of forgot that I even had a Twitch channel at one stage, but after a bit I just came around and you know Twitch became a bit more popular, a bit more mainstream, and thought I'd decide to start giving it a go. And when I properly got into it in about 2014, I started to build a small following, so around two to three people. Uh, and then when I started speedrunning, it kind of grew from there, really. The first speedrunners I ever watched was two people mainly. The first was someone called Adam AK, and the other is called Joshimas. Obviously, a lot of people know who Joshimas is this day and age. Um, I took quite an interest in watching them both speedrun Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, however, the run looked a bit too complex when I first looked at it. So I ended up looking at what games that I was actually decent at and what I knew a lot about. Um, my first speed game was actually The Simpsons Set and Run. Um, I had a blast running it and didn't really know much about speed tech at the time, but it's fair to say that speedrun races against a few people and getting better at the game over time and learning new tricks, it definitely helped me feel good uh, and made me feel good about myself, really. After Simpsons Hit and Run, Viper branched out to several other racing titles, and his first world record was gained in something just a little bit more grounded. Colin McRae Rally 2, which is one of my main speed games still, even to this day. Uh, and it was for the novice championship category. It felt easy to get, as when I first started running the game, I ran it on PlayStation 1, mainly via emulation. Um, but once I found out how much faster the PC version was, I ended up running it on there, and I quickly snatched the world record by about 8 minutes. Uh, I've been practicing the game for around 3 months or so, up until that point, it was on and off. Um, but when I nailed it and I did that run, I honestly got to say, it felt fantastic. Um, I was gobsmacked that it was actually, you know, that fast and beat the current world record as much as it did. But after I did the run, I actually felt like there was a lot of time that was in hand. I had time save in hand. Not lots, but a bit. Uh, and I could actually improve on it. Viper loves speedrun marathons and he remembers his first appearance on ESA as a particularly special moment in his speedrunning career thus far. Getting into ESA for the first time in 2019 um, definitely has to be one of my biggest achievements, as it was something I never thought I'd be able to get into. To be honest, I always thought that ESA was mainly for big streamers and you had to be like a world record holder on a, on a game or they'd only accept like the best of the best, um, or there was only certain games that would be accepted. Um, but no, I was quite happy to get in and do my first one. I was very nervous, but managed to push through it and I'm very happy that I did that for the first time. Um, as far as my speedrunning goes though, my biggest achievement for me was getting the sub-120 in Cormacray Rally 2 on the Novice Championship. As it came, First of all, it came from nowhere, but also it was a great run from start to finish. It was also a casual run as well, which makes it that much more fun for me to watch. When I ended up doing that run uh, it was the first under one hour 20 and as of, as of right now it is the current and only time that's under one hour 20 so yeah can't wait to see who uh, breaks it next we've done it we've done it i can't believe that sub 120 complete that was a long time coming i'm sorry i'm gonna have to let it out yes come on 
Skips and shortcuts in racing speedruns can be notoriously tricky to pull off, and Skips and Colin McRae Rally 2.0 are no exception. So one of the hardest strats I've ever learned was out of bounds in Colin McRae Rally 2. So this was found by one of the members of the Colin McRae community. Uh, and up until quite recently it was seen as impossible because most cars couldn't fit through the gap and there was one that was definitely able to fit through the gap. Um, however, thanks to a new technique of getting past it, it's become a bit easier. However, it's still pretty hard to get on a run. And there's a certain angle which you need your car to be facing, and it means that if you turn too hard, you won't get it. You end up wrecking the car. But if you do get it, then you can save around 50 seconds to a minute um, just through that one stage. We've since found other ways of completing the same course in a faster way. Uh, however, this way is actually slower, but it's easier to pull off. So for a rookie, it'd be easier to pull off uh, if you know where you're going and where to drive to. My advice for a beginner is to learn the course normally, or should I say stages as they are in the game, and then start to try out some of the out of bounds tricks and see which ones are easiest for them to get. But for a rookie, just kind of start off slow, learn the tracks, learn where the, some of the cuts are, and then just build up your, you know, your information bank from there, essentially. When it comes to bad habits, Viper agrees with the age-old adage about ignoring viewer counts and follower numbers. Furthermore, he warns new runners against getting trapped in reset hell. Streaming is tend to be something where you start small and work your way up the ladder, uh, just a bit like a job, to be honest, in real life. And it requires patience, a lot of it, um, but hard work as well. And in the end, it all pays off, I feel. Uh, my advice really is to not take note of follower numbers and viewership numbers, as it can easily put you off. And um, remember, you, you are streaming because you want to do it, not because you have to. Don't let the numbers get to you. You know, at the end of the day, as I said before, it's all about enjoyment. It's not about numbers and who can be more popular than the other. Uh, as for speedrunning habits, resetting as soon as something goes wrong, less than like 10 seconds into it. Um, racing games can be a bit like that um, because you might not get either the right weather or you might end up starting in the slowest car or something like that. But it, your best idea is the less resets you can do when you're starting out, the better because it basically teaches you something, which is just don't give up, because you never know. It might come back to you as you get through it. Um, the whole resetting as soon as something goes wrong, it can be a hard pill to swallow uh, for some people, myself included. I personally still haven't overcome this bad habit. And so, like I said, my advice is just push through, practice your speed game as much as you can before, and, and then try and do a run and see how it goes. But obviously the, the less resetting you do at first, the better. It's when you want to start going for them really good times later down the line that resetting might become a bit more of a, a bit more natural to you. But just try and hold off on doing it when you first started, is what I'll say. Back when he was revving up to start speedrunning Hit and Run, Viper remembers the entire community being warm and welcoming, with a pair of runners being particularly helpful. The first two people I interacted with uh, and got help with were from two guys called Pessimistic Mango and Pet Petaguana. And these guys gave me a lot of motivation to keep running the Simpsons set and run when I first started running that. Uh, and also helped me out with some techniques to beat some of the levels quicker, thanks to them and also a few members of that community that managed to pick that up a bit better. Uh, also, someone called Franz, who is actually within the Colin McRae Rally community, helped me get into that game and community. Because um, basically there was a lot of cuts that were found earlier on by him when I first started running the game and I used a lot of them. So it's big thanks to him. But it's also two other guys called Lucky and Zorkov, uh, who've also found a lot of new cuts and tricks to make the game faster. So basically it's thanks to these three guys that the world record has come right down. In a way, the speedrunning of racing games is one of the most pure, obvious forms of speedrunning there is. And yet, I personally have barely even considered it. Viper has gone in 100% with racing and driving games for over a decade now, and he shows no signs of hitting the brakes anytime soon. In closing, Viper would like to remind you that, in the end, it's all about having fun. And whenever possible, be sure to immerse yourself in the community. Speedrunning is mainly a hobby and it should be treated like a hobby to be honest. Don't make it the main center of your life unless you can make it into a job like some of the big streamers can. And above all, enjoy yourself. Because that is basically, in my opinion, what streaming is all about. If you want to make lots of new friends, then try a speedrunning marathon, because they're always a good place to start. 
And it's also a good place for getting yourself out there as well and meeting new people. I mean, there's a lot of events that are held online and offline. Um, if there is an event near you that is on site, try and get yourself there and sit back and just meet some new people. It's essentially like, you know, like a Comic Con, I'd say. But rather than it be the, the focus being to do with comic books, it's all to do with gaming and what you've got in common. So yeah, give that a try. I definitely think you won't be disappointed. Obviously, if it's an online one, it's a case of you probably will be able to talk to new people. And it also, like I said, it gets you out there as well. So yeah, try both, I'd say, if you can. Before we go, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Viper for taking the time to answer the questions for this feature. You can find links to his YouTube, Twitch channel, and Twitter in the description below. Don't forget to give him a follow. I hope you enjoyed today's Better Know a Speedrunner. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any future episodes. Is there a runner that you'd like to see featured? Let me know in the comments below. And finally, special thanks to our super generous Patreon supporters, Totally Not a Mimic and Happy Code Monkey. And if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next run.